finally have an opportunity to come into the community to talk about prostate cancer awareness, we jump at the chance. I want to thank Mayor Moses Rodriguez for allowing us to host the event here at St. Edith Stein. Um, it's a great program that I think people need to be aware of. Black men and men of color are prime parts of prostate cancer. So today, so today we have a few people who will come here and talk about prostate cancer awareness. And I'm going to turn it over now to Steve Renaud, who's actually the MC of the program. Thank you. A person that needs no introduction in this parish and because of his latest appointment needs no introduction throughout the whole city of Brockton. But, for edification, I'd like to introduce, and it is my great pleasure to introduce my friend of many years, Mayor Moses Rodriguez. Thank you. 
portanto, é mais de uma volta para o anime do que qualquer outra cidade. Cancer survivor. Uma das pessoas que não tem nem que foi para ver com nós é Darren, portanto, Darren Ward. Ele é chefe de gabinete da polícia de Broca, portanto, ele é um dia sobrevivente de casa de Nostra e também é recentemente recebido como um dia chefe de gabinete na office de presidente de Broca. Também é jornalista. Ele é recente excelência de trabalho que ele faz na televisão, uh, incluindo canais de notícias grandes, como a CNN, CBS, NBC e PBS. Portanto, ele é também explica a nós como é que passa o programa de Brasil. Caso não possa. Thank you so much, and I want to thank everybody for coming. I really, I really do. I'm a second generation Cape Verdean American. Uh, my mom spoke the language, my father did not, hence I don't know Creole, otherwise I would, I would translate for you. But I do want to say a couple of things, and I know there are not a lot of men here, but they asked me to come by and share my story, and one of the reasons why I want to share my story is because if it can help one person, if it can save one life, then it's been worth it. So please, tell your uncles, fathers, grandfathers, about a story I'm about to tell you, and maybe you can save their life. Portanto, a mim é um, porque a segunda geração de família cavaleira na Dinamarca, o 
Portanto, minha mãe é a própria língua crioulo e minha mãe é a própria. Portanto, mim também é a própria crioulo, mas claro, sinto uma viagem de traduzir para o mas está de pão, para divulgar para nós, para compartilhar com nós a história de câncer. Portanto, tem um chance, tem um chance de salvar uma vida, não está fazendo, de junto. Portanto, está passando essa mensagem para o teu, para o pai, para o avô, para tudo que tem que hoje, que o povo de uma sala de servir. So I used to go to many of these events where you are right now. Thanks to Admitech Foundation, Dr. Stern, uh, the Brockton chapter of the NAACP. I would go to these events and hear people talk about prostate cancer awareness. I did not think that affected me. So I didn't bother going to the doctor. I didn't get checked. I just kept on going with my life. <laughs> I think it was 2016, I go to one of these events and Dr. Stern was talking about an event that they were having uh, at Beacon Hill, it's a cancer awareness event and she wanted some people to be in the audience and it would be good for us to hear about it. I remember saying to her then that I know I couldn't make it, but I promised myself I'd go get checked. Um, I'd get a blood, a blood test, a PSA, to find out where my levels were. So in doing that, I went ahead and got checked, and guess what? My levels were high, I didn't know what they were. They sent me to a specialist. I go to my specialist, again, this is 2016, and he does what a specialist normally does under these circumstances and sent me on my way. I said, doctor, do I have cancer? He said, I don't think so. But let me see you again in another nine months or so. Fast forward two years, it's 2018, a relative of mine calls me and says, he has a disease. A light goes off in my head, and I think about all the times that Dr. Stern and others at these events talked about, you should know what your PSA score is, and you should know what that means. And here's why that's important. Because you know what, folks? I didn't know what my PSA score was. I followed the doctor's lead. She said, my primary care doctor said, go to the specialist. I went to the specialist. They didn't tell me what my score was. The specialist didn't say anything that caused me or him alarm. So I think I'm fine. As far as I know, as far as I know, everything is okay. But when I heard my relative now, and I started thinking about, I need to know what these PSA scores mean. I'm telling you this story because sometimes, actually all the time, we as patients have to be our best advocates. Sure, we can rely on the medical community, but we have to be our own advocates. They see a lot of people. Sometimes they miss things. They almost miss me. I'm still standing here alive today because I became my best advocate. When I pushed my specialist to say, look, I think we need an MRI or a biopsy here. Because that's really the way you can tell. Sure, this blood test gives you an indication, but you really don't know until you get an MRI or, or a, a biopsy for sure. Well, we keep going up.
Maravilha, não estou lá com isso. E eu não estou em família, mas não estou especialista, mas nunca fui uma coisa que eu ia E também, me lembro de especialista, e especialista nunca explicava o que é o número, o que é o número que eu ia ser. Então, tinha um vez que nós não temos que ser nós advogados, ou seja, advogados de nossa pessoa, não tem que ser a parte voz de nossa pessoa. Não tem que ter diferente de nossa pessoa. Então, olha, quase, e saúde de uma parte dos hospitais, So at the end of the day, folks, I won't take up too much of your time. I finally got the doctor to do a biopsy. Ten days later, the results come back. And the results, folks, were shocking. So shocking that when my doctor called me back, the specialist, his face was red. Because I'm the one that had to force the issue. He said, Darren, I'm sorry, you have prostate cancer. But not only do you have prostate cancer, you have an aggressive form. So aggressive that we have to move fast because we hope it's not too late. Meaning we hope it did not move to other parts of your body. Thank God, thank God for organizations like this. Thank God that it hadn't left other parts of my body. Thank God for, uh, there's a surgeon I went to in Boston named Dr. Ingolf Turk, who was scheduled to be here today I want to thank him for saving my life as well, because within 30 days we had surgery. Not only took that prostate gland out, but he says we got all the cancer out, and right now I'm cancer free. But the key I want to make, I want you to take home and tell your folks, because we, we employ you to check and go to your doctor and get your PSA checked. But unfortunately, sometimes it takes more than that. You have to be your own advocate. You should know if you have cancer, because guess what? Many doctors will say, it is a slow moving cancer, but not for everybody. It's slow moving for some, it's not slow moving for others. And the only way you can know that is if you get a, a MRI a biopsy, and then the doctor and you can determine the course of treatment, whether you have aggressive cancer or not. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your time, and God bless. I mentioned that we have two brave gentlemen here this evening, to, who, this afternoon, to share their story. Next, we will hear from uh, Victor McCann. Victor McCann is a prostate cancer survivor and leader of the Patriots program at Raytheon Company. Like Darren, he is a dedicated community leader and role model for many men who are facing decisions about prostate cancer screening and options in patient care. Without further ado, Victor, please join us. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. All right. I just wanted to let you know that um, I actually live here in Brockton. I live about uh, three blocks down here on Huntington Street. So this is home for me. I just want you to know that as scary as this sounds about cancer, this is something that's treatable. I'm so grateful to Darian for being here and talking about what it was actually like to have the aggressive form of the disease. Ah, portanto, isso é uma é um assunto que é assustador, é um assunto que tem o James May fala de câncer, mas não tem nem chance de ter uma solução que tem cura, graças às minhas intervenções, às minhas que eu tenho, portanto, esse assunto ele pode ser curado. So my journey actually started in 2013. In 2013, I went for a annual physical, and part of the physical was to check the, the PSA. Now, I have history in my family. My dad, my four uncles, and a first cousin 
also were diagnosed with prostate cancer. Go ahead. Yes, first cousin, primo. So I see that there are not a lot of men here this afternoon, but there are women here. And women, if you want your men around, make sure that they go and get an annual physical. Right. So when you go to see the doctor, you need to ask him specifically for the PSA test when you go for your physical. PSA. Right. So my PSA level was 4.5, and anything above one is a problem. All right? Right. So then your doctor will, your primary care physician will ask you or tell you that you will be referred to a urologist, a specialist. Right. So when I went to see the urologist, the first thing he wanted to do was to do a biopsy. And I said, whoa, I don't want to do a biopsy. I want to get more information. All right, so you're here today to get information. These people that are sitting up here can provide the information to you. If you look at this little banner here, over here, with the colors on it, at the bottom, there's a website, www.admitech.org. Make sure that you leave when you go home and you go and check out that website. There's a lot of information there on that website. Right, so I'm going to wrap up now. The long story. Right. Dr. Stern is asking me to inform you that the type of cancer that I have is not aggressive. They're doing what's called watchful surveillance with me. Right, so I haven't had any surgery and I haven't had any treatment yet. Right? Right. And in closing, if you have questions, you want to talk to me, I will be here. You can come and talk to me. I'll give you information as well. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Victor. Thank you, Victor, and thank you, Darren, for that wonderful and very important uh, information. They stressed how important it is for you to share this information with your father, your uncles, your brothers, and your community members. You are the best thing that ever happened to all of us. There are so many young people here today. Please share this information with your adult men in your family. Por favor, compartilhe essas informações de o pai, o teu, os irmãos, portanto, homens que compartilham. Minha avó é a maior coisa que eu 
voi condizioni con noi oggi. Spaccio, mi dico se non lo sapete o già lo sapete, per favore, non scompartire le informazioni su questo oggi. How many people here know the performing artist Gladys Knight? Yes. Gladys Knight. Mm -hmm. She sang a song called The Best Thing That Ever Happened. How many remember that song? You, know, you may not be delighted, but I'm going to give you the words to it. I've had my share of life's ups and downs, but, but fate's been good. The downs have been few. I guess you could say that I've been lucky. I guess you could say because it's all, all of you. Portanto, vida é cheia de e baixo. Mas tem que um dos que nós, que nós temos por influência para começar a vida. If anyone should ever write my life story, for whatever reason it may be, you'll be there. All of you will be there, between each line of pain and glory, because you are the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm sure that the men who have had prostate cancer early in their life share that sentiment about the youth in their family. And if they had not been screened early and have an aggressive form of cancer, probably wish that someone had told them to be screened. So you're the best thing that ever happened to so many people, and we want you to love and share this information with your adult males. Portanto, bom é o ano que eu disse em vídeo. Portanto, simplesmente compartilhe informações com pessoas masculinas, e homens e mulheres. Compartilhe informações. O ano mais cedo, compartilhe informações. O ano mais cedo, o teste foi feito. Portanto, mais there are three organizations that are putting this program on today. They are Brockton Branch of the NAACP, Good Samaritan Medical Center, and Advitec Foundation. We are honored to have with us today Dr. Faina Stern, who is the president of Advitec Foundation. She has been providing international leadership for groundbreaking progress in prostate cancer research medical education, public awareness, and advocacy for over 20 years. Dr. Stern uh, uh, held leadership positions in the National Institute of Health in Harvard Medical School. She came here to the United States from the Ukraine in 1979. At this time, and for this portion of the program, where we'll be talking about and discussing the state of art in prostate cancer care uh, and addressing any questions that you may have, I'd like to present Dr. Faina Stern. Please give her a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I would like, I have a question. How many people present here have someone in their family who has prostate cancer? Please raise your hands. How many people here has, have prostate cancer in their family? Please translate. Okay. Uh, please keep your hands up. Okay. Uh, how many people have know someone uh, who has a friend who has prostate cancer? Please raise your hand. 
How many people know someone in your perhaps more distant community who has prostate cancer? Please raise your hands. Thank you so much. I want you to, to look around. I want you to look around because African American men are two and a half times more likely to die of prostate cancer and uh, are at far greater risk of getting that. And yet here we have two extraordinary men, Darren Duarte and Victor McCann. Darren Duarte had life-threatening prostate cancer. Only a small fraction of men, even African-American men, have life-threatening prostate cancer. It's about 20, 30 percent. Most men have harmless prostate cancer, the kinds of disease that Victor has. And thanks to prostate cancer awareness, Darren got treatment he needed, and his life is saved. And Victor, because of prostate cancer awareness and education, underwent very precise testing that showed he had indeed a harmless disease. And right now, he is under careful observation. He never had to have treatment just to make sure that cancer will not progress. Now, six years after diagnosis, the probability of Victor ever needing surgery or any kind of invasive procedures is extremely low. So these are two stories that I want you to remember. Most of the stories, actually even in African-American community, will be a story of Victor McCann. But unless men get tested, and we know if they are at risk of prostate cancer, we cannot figure out if they do have prostate cancer, if it is the kind of disease that doesn't need to be treated, can be safely watched, or it is a disease that can kill. When we came to Brockton the first time, when we had a first major event in Brockton in January 2016, we surveyed uh, 14 key leaders of Brockton NAACP. I will stop and I will ask you to translate, please. You can also see the banner right there on my left hand side. And what this banner shows that if men are detected early with prostate cancer, all of them are alive at five years. If prostate cancer diagnosed late, when it is already escaped outside of the prostate, we call it metastasis, late stage of prostate cancer, only 28 men will be alive in five years. Please translate. These 72 men out of 100 who we lost did not have to lose their lives. The way to save your life is to do exactly what Victor did and what Darren did, is to talk to your doctor 
and to talk to your men for women to make sure they talk to their doctors about whether or not prostate cancer screening, PSA test mentioned by Darren, is the right test for them. Thank you. Um, I led development of breast cancer imaging tool, which are standard today. Uh, breast cancer mammography, diagnostics, etc., etc., minimally invasive treatment. When I was at the National Cancer Institute, as mentioned by Steve. At that time, in the early to mid 90s, we had horrific differences in um, mortality in women dying of prostate cancer in African American community vis a vis Caucasian community. It was, the difference was horrifying, very similar to what we have in prostate cancer today. However, today in Massachusetts, there is no difference between women, Caucasian women, and African American women dying of prostate cancer. It, it was equalized. And what is a great equalizer is, a, is early detection. Please translate. If we did it for breast cancer, prostate cancer is a very similar disease to prostate cancer. If we did it for breast, if we eliminated disparities for breast cancer, we can eliminate disparities for prostate cancer. But what it takes is exactly what Darren did, what Victor did, is to not assume that your busy doctor will talk to you or your husband or your father or your son about prostate cancer these days. You have to make sure that men present here and women who are present here will talk to their men about making sure to talk to their doctors. Okay, I am a black man. I am 40 years old or older. Is it time for me to have prostate cancer screening? Please translate. There is a lot of controversy and different opinions in medical community whether or not uh, uh, men should be screened. A general population, all men should be screened. I want you to know that no matter what you hear in, on television, what you may hear on the radio, this argument has no relevance to African American men because African American men are dying of prostate cancer at the rate of two and a half times higher than anybody else. And without screening, no physician can no physician can really help 
because without screening we cannot detect prostate cancer early. And when we diagnose prostate cancer late, please remember about this banner. Please remember that with late diagnosis, only 28 men out of 100 will be alive. That it's all because of you if anyone should ever write in my life story. For whatever reason there might be, you'll be there between trying pain and glory, cause you're the best thing that ever.